Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Johan Gori, I'm the Managing Director of JGBC. Today's video is all about cash flow forecasting. In a recent video I did using utilising the QuickBooks tool for cash flow, which looks his, at historic data, I was asked how we look at data going forwards. So today that's what this video is going to be all about. Using a tool that we use in our own business to help forecast our cash flow and understand what's going to happen and plan for it in the future. We hope this video is useful to you. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the like button below and also subscribe to our channel so you see future videos. So let's get started. The app I want to talk to you today about is called Float. Float is a cash flow software that looks at your cash flow going forwards. It connects to your accounting package, be it QuickBooks, Xero or Free Agent, and it pulls in all your historic data and then helps you to work and predict your future cash flow based on that historic data. We've been using Float for about 12 months in our business now, and it's through the use of Float and the projection of our cash flow that we've been able to plan, forecast, and roll out our big changes and adaptions and increasing our staff team. And without Float, we wouldn't have had the knowledge or confidence to be able to do this as quickly and as efficiently as we have done. It also meant that when this coronavirus hit, we knew straight away what our weaknesses were and where we needed to shore things up. Last year, I was one of the first members of the Float Accountants Group to become certified in using Float while I helped them trial their new certification process. So we're very well versed with how Float works and what it does to help our customers. So this is the first screen you're gonna get when you log into Float. This is after we've connected a company and it's pulled through the data. So we've just connected a sample company that we use to do all our testing and training on. Our preference of accounting software is QuickBooks. So that's what we've connected to it on our sample company free. So on the home screen, you straight away get a good idea where your cash flow is, total balance in QuickBooks, how many bank accounts that's made up of. It helps you start identifying issues with late invoices coming in or late bills being paid by yourself. It also helps you start to get an idea of movement of your cash flow and your cash versus your budgets. The real powerful part of Float is the cash flow tool, which we're gonna go through now. I always look at cash in your bank account as your heartbeat of your business. Without cash, your business dies. So what we're looking for here is a nice strong heartbeat. In Float you've got a zero line. Now this line can be adjusted to represent your your business's position. So if you have a cash if you have an overdraft in your business, you can drop this line lower if you're happy to be operating in your overdraft. If however, like on this business, they want to be in prop in cash positive terms at all times, then we've kept it set at zero. What I would suggest is the more the higher this heartbeat is that's the more exercise your business is doing to generate cash. And the more cash you've got, the more healthier position you're in. If your cash starts to flatline, or even go into the red in, as a negative, that's when we know we've got a problem and we need to start sorting our businesses out. So this graph is generated by the data down here. So there's not very much data in here at the moment because it's just a sample company. But I'm going to take you through adding a few lines and help to project things and we'll also try and apply it to how we're going to work in the coronavirus situation. So what you do is you click on a box that you want to edit and add a budget to. We're not gonna worry about sales just now because at the moment, as a new business, we're not sure quite how the coronavirus is gonna impact on our performance. This business was only formed in April. So what we're gonna do instead is look at the costs that we have to provide and then we can look at how much we need to generate to help us break even and keep cash flow positive. So we've got accountancy fees here. Okay, so in April there's £102 that went to JGBC. So JGBC, being slightly prejudiced here, have been really helpful and supportive during this time. So we're really keen to help maintain the, our payments to them and continue to support the helping that they're providing us with. So what we go do is we're going to go and put in budgets that we want to continue this budget. So we're going to call the budget JGPC, and the budget go the payment goes out every month on the first of the month. The budget is going to continue until the end of the cash flow, and it's a fixed value amount of one hundred and two pounds. 
Now with float, all it cares about is cash in and cash out. What you don't need to worry about is the VAT. So in every transaction, be it sales or expenses, always include the VAT. What you're looking at is the amount of money that's going to leave your bank account. We'll deal with the VAT aspect later on. So we're going to create that. And in a couple of clicks, we've now got that budget going through the time frame, which is fantastic. OK, advertising. Let's have a look at what happened in April. In April, we spent £120 with Google AdWords. Now, advertising might be something you're inclined to reduce or remove entirely at the mo in the, while you're planning what you're going to do to survive the coronavirus period. So let's just leave that there for now. Not got any bank charges because we bank with Starling, so it's free of charge. Computer running costs. Let's have a look at this one. OK, so we've spent £15 at QuickBooks. So what we're going to do is we know QuickBooks is a really powerful tool and it's really important we keep that going. So we're going to put a budget name in here of QuickBooks. Every month. It goes out on the first of the month as it did last month. Now what we could do is use the last month's actuals. So that fills that in automatically for us. If we had a bit more data in here, we it would tell us how much we've spent on average over three months and we could use that instead. In this case, I'm just going to do it at the full price of last month, fixed value, create. OK, so that's our QuickBooks data in. Now, there's no data here for in April for cost of sales. In this case, that's because the invoice, the bill was received in April for stock we got in April, but that's due in May. So there's a 30 day lag and 30 days of credit here. So if we were to buy stock in May, that would be due in June. So we're not quite sure what our sales are going to be looking like just yet. So we'll just wait, leave that one for now and come back. Insurance. Well, most insurance providers, whether we like it or not, are still charging. So we'll stick in the insurance. Fixed value again. So we'll keep that going. OK. Now, wage expenses. We've got, for this example, we'll say we've got two people paid, two and a half thousand pounds between them. We're going to keep them both on, one will be on furlough and one won't be. One will be carrying on to help us, if, assuming we've got enough business. But because they're both still going to have to be paid, even if we're claiming some of the furlough money back, we're going to put it through still at the full price. End of cash flow. Now wages gets paid out on the 7th of the month in this case. And we're going to go with the full 2500 create. Okay, so so far we've got a really negative cash flow problem going on here. Lo basically loads and loads of debt building up. As you can see, each month we're getting worse and worse off. And that's because we've not put any sales in yet. So sales. Last month we had a shop till sales worth £6,000. We've got £120 due to come in on an invoice, which is from a client who had some credit from us. Now, we might not have be able to do the shop sales anymore, but potentially we're going to be able to do online sales and deliveries. So we're going to put in an online category. So we've decided we're going to chain, pivot our business and try and make some money online. The beauty of this is that it won't be on credit terms. It will be really quick into our bank account within three or four days of the transaction because of card providers like PayPal. OK, and we're going to say by the end of every month, we're going to have we're going to aim for £3,000 in the first month, OK? And But what we're going to say is we want that to, we're going to challenge ourselves here and increase it by a percentage every month. And we want to increase our online sales by 10% over the next three months. And we're going to keep doing online sales for six months while we're still in the coronavirus stage. So we're going to stick that in there. OK? Now... 
our customer that gets credit has said that they're going to stay, they're going to keep buying stuff from us as well. So we're going to stick that in. And we'll say they their money comes in on the 15th. And because they're a good customer, they're going to stay on with us for the rest of the time. At a fixed value of £120. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to have some problems, but it's looking better. But in generating sales, we're going to have cost of sales. So what we know is we made £6,000 on £3,000 worth of stock. So we're going to need some stock to help our position. We'll call it 1,500. And because our sales are going to go up each month, we're going to increase our costs of sales each month by 10%. Okay. So let's have a look at how that all looks. Okay, so we're starting to look a bit stronger, but it's still not ideal. We've still got plenty of red. But there is important things to remember. So what we need to remember is We've got some furlough income. So of that two and a half thousand pounds worth of wages, we've got a thousand pounds going to come in on furlough each year, each month. So what we're going to do is in this case, while we're just modeling, we're going to put furlough income. And we'll say it comes in at the end of the month, ready for the seventh. And we're going to claim it until August. Now all these numbers I'm using are just exaggerated numbers. I'm not paying any science behind the maths, I'm just trying to demonstrate the software for you. Normally obviously furlough would go into a very into its own dedicated line, but we're not going to mess around with that just now. So if we come out of that now, right, we're starting to look better off already. Now what else do we know? Well actually we know there's going to be a £10,000 income from our business rates because we've got a small property. So what I'm going to do is manage my table layout. I'm just going to add another account that's in here. Rates. Cash out. Okay, we've got another line. Now I'm not going to add rent because we're going to pretend the landlord's been very nice and given us a rent a rent break. But what we do know is in May the local council is going to give us a grant for ten thousand pounds, and it's a one-off payment. So create that, put that in there. Create it proper way. Okay, so now we know. Actually, with where with our current position, we're now good until January 2021. And you can see where the furlough person's starting to come back in. That's full wage, and the government's not supporting them anymore because that's going down gradually. And we've also said we're going to stop our online sales here. Now the beauty of float is we can now add a new scenario. So we're going to do it in orange. We can call it S1. So we're going to copy the base scenario, which is our best is our average scenario. And then we're going to say, right, hopefully in December. Our shop's going to be open again. Okay, and that's going to continue. That's going to have a slower start, but we'll call it five thousand pounds, increasing the value. We'll aim to increase our sales by five percent each month. Okay. 
Now, online sales have done us really good over the last few months and they've really helped us out. But we said in our original plan, we're not gonna do online sales after this because that might mean we need another staff member. So let's put an online sales, which was 3,000 increasing by 10%, but we're gonna keep it at 3,500 because our shops reopened, that's where our primary customers will go. Okay, we've put that in. Right, and now you can see the difference. The blue line being the original forecast we did and the orange, the new forecast. Now, with the increased forecast of sales, we're gonna have a bigger cost of sales. So we'll put that in as well. So we've got the online version which will be 1500 and then we've got the shop sales excuse my typing And that's 2,500 and we've said we're gonna increase our shop sales by 5%, which means our stock will demand will go up by 5%. Continue. Now the main reason we originally said, oh, we're gonna to have to slow things down here and uh, have a look at our feasibility of the online sales is because of staffing. So let's have a look if in December, Shops reopen, so we're going to need another staff member. So we're going to add another staff member. This person's going to help us with our online sales going forwards. So they're just going to be part time. So we're going to put in 675. Okay. And now we can see how long we've got until we get into trouble. And we're down to May before we're struggling, but that's much better than we were originally with the, with the original scenario. So at this point, you would then be looking at other things such as, can you reduce your costs anywhere? Can you get a better deal from your suppliers for your, cost, for your stock? Um, or how much more do we need to increase our sales by to maintain this positive orange line here. So we might turn around and say, well, actually, we are going to, as of March, no, as of January, we're going to push even harder on the online sales. And we're going to push for an extra £2,500 a month on that. And because we're doing so much, so well on this buying our stock, our supplier is going to give us a discount. So normally we're working out 50% of our stock. But in this case, they've dropped it down to a smaller cost so we don't have to worry about that going okay and then the other cost wages that part-timer is going to have to go to have her have their hours increased by So an extra 50%. So they're going into, so of, say, 20 hours a week, they're now going to be th working 30 hours a week. We'll put that on at 350. At which point we can see we've now brought ourselves until July 2021 before we start having problems or August even 
So that's just a really quick example of how we use cash flow projections to work out what's going on. The other smart feature of Zoom, the other smart feature of Float is up in invoices due and bills due to help you forecast more accurately. So if we go to invoices due and scroll down. There's an overdue invoice due to us from client A. So what we need to do is give client A a ring and say, excuse me, sorry to bother you, money's tight for everyone at the moment. We're not hassling you, but we just want to know roughly when we can expect the payment. The suppliers turn around, the customers turn around and say, I'm really sorry, it'll be with you in seven days today, from today. So we can set that up and that's now being accounted for and Float has projected when that will be due in and we'll adjust the cash flow for it. In the same regards, we go to bills. Our supplier has said, you know what, we're all struggling, don't worry about it, I'm going to give you an extra 30 days to pay. So we'll put that into 30 days. If we go to our cash flow, that will have now all be reflected here. So we've used Float and its multiple scenarios because you can have several scenarios all at the same time just by clicking another add. You can even duplicate the previous scenario if you want to work off that or if you just want to work off the base you can. But we've been using this to grow our business for the last 12 months. So every time I make an, a decision about whether we're going to recruit a staff member, whether we're going to invest in marketing, whether we're going to invest in a new website, anything like that, it all gets put through our cash flow tool. And at all times, my objective is to have 12 months of positive cash flow. So if this was my business here, and I started to see negative, we're declining, which is less than 12 months away, I'd start taking actions and decisions to help improve that by modeling different examples of what we can be doing. Sometimes that's increasing our sales by having a push on something in particular. Other times it's by cutting our costs back. But we always look at how we can improve it from both directions before we make a final decision. And we also model several scenarios to make sure we're making the best decision for both ourselves, our clients and our staff. So that's just a really quick brief overview of Float. It's extremely powerful, it gives you really good insight, it allows you to model and play around with your ideas of what you may or may not do. And it will allow you to see the impact of your decisions before you make them. If you're interested in Float and you already use Zero, QuickBooks or FreeAgent, please get in touch and we'll have a chat through how we can help you set this up and get it up and running. It's very simple once it's up and running for you to be able to come in and change whatever you need to in here to model your latest scenario. And remember, nothing that you do on here impacts on your accounts in your accounting software. So it's a very safe place for you to play and model different scenarios. Well, I hope that's been helpful and informative. If you've got any questions, just stick them in the comments below. Remember, if the video was useful, please feel free to give it a like. And if you want to see more things like this, then subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. Thank you.